And today I'm going to show you the best video editing computer for Premiere Pro CC so you can save yourself dozens of hours researching what to buy. Let's start right now. Bentolosa.com Let me begin by saying that I have been building custom computers for almost 25 years. 12 of them in corporate America for two different companies and I went to school for an AS on computer systems management. Not that school and work experience matters much anymore or to say building a computer is rocket science. But I thought to give you a quick glance on my personal IT background. As you know, anybody can build a custom PC or a Hackintosh rig. This video is not going to be super technical and it is based on my extensive research on what is the most optimal setup for video editing with Premiere CC in 2018 while balancing productivity and budget. It is not the most expensive build money can buy today, but I spent dozens of hours researching what's the best PC I could build without spending extra money on resources that will increase my productivity just negligently. For example, I will explain you why I didn't get 16 cores but 14 instead, why the monitor is not ultra wide, and why I finally purchased the 1800 bucks BenQ model instead of the 1300 one. That said, this is the most balanced setup I can come up with for my video editing PC. Bear with me, let's just get started. Tom Antos, a cinematographer I respect, recommends BenQ monitors because the value they offer between price and color accuracy. To me, the BenQ PD3200U 32 inches 4K 60Hz is the perfect monitor for the price. Why not a curved ultra wide? Because I dislike how the curvature distorts the windows, edges and corners in Premiere Pro, CC and all other programs. And I just don't find it natural to edit and color grade. Why not a flat ultra wide monitor? Because most, if not all, as of the beginning of 2018 are not really 4K monitors and because the height of a 34 inches ultra wide monitor is the same height as a 27 inches wide monitor. 32 inches is the perfect size for 4K video editing on a desk that you have basically two or so feet away from your face. I only went with the Cooler Master Cosmos C700P but decided that I do not need a full tower. It's just overkill and a mid tower has enough room for everything I purchased plus plenty of room for expanding in the future. I also think the C700P's tempered glass is a tad too dark for my taste. So I went with the Cooler Master Master K H500P ATX mid tower case. For less than 150 bucks, the Cooler Masters Master Case H500P is enough for most video editors out there. I only have two M.2 drives, but you have plenty of space to add at least another eight mechanical or SSD hard drives inside. Not to mention the external drives you can also connect through USB. What I love. Number one, Cable management removable panel. Number two, the two 200 mil big fans on the front. And number three, the price. What I dislike. Number one, the plasticky, very loose top ventilation cover. It just basically falls off when you gently grab it. And number two, no top handles to transport it. That's a big no-no. MSI recommends this motherboard for video editors because basically you cannot really get any significant advantages from a more expensive motherboard. 
Many other filmmakers and cinematographers use this motherboard in their build. The MSI Pro Series Intel X299 SLI Plus comes with enough features for any video editor. If you are a gamer, there are plenty more models with extra features you might desire like support for two CPUs, for example. But for less than 250 bucks, this motherboard is just perfect for most video editors. Eight RAM slots give you plenty of flexibility to expand in the next five to 10 years. No onboard Bluetooth and no onboard Wi-Fi. But for a few bucks, you can get a Bluetooth USB dongle and you can get a much better external Wi-Fi adapter than any onboard chip can offer. With a base frequency of 3.1 GHz, the 7940X represents the sweet spot in terms of price and performance. The performance of anything beyond 14 cores for video editing is practically negligent in Premiere Pro CC, and even though After Effects does benefit a bit more, it is not enough for me because my AE work is not very high and the 7940X performs perfectly fine. The design award-winning MSI Gaming GeForce GTX 1080 Gaming X with 8 gigs SLI VR ready graphics card offers enough power to render 4K and 6K files at more than acceptable speeds. I would recommend you to jump to a 16 gigs card instead if you are working with 8K raw files. If you are not a gamer, stick to this card and you'll be golden. The Cooler Master Master Liquid Pro 280 CPU cooler is perfect for optimizing the temperature performance of my PC. The 240 should also be enough, but I wanted a bit more cushion just in case. The Cooler Master V850 has enough power to power all my components and allows me room to grow. Wanna save me a few bucks? Go with the V750. Wanna grow even more? Go with the V1000. The V850 is a great in between and remember, the power supplies do lose capacity over the years. Thirty-two gigabytes HyperX Predator Black at twenty-four hundred megahertz DDR4 is the base I recommend. I wanted sixty-four gigabytes, but I don't have the budget right now. I start with thirty-two, grow to sixty-four as soon as you can. I use two DEMs of sixteen gigs so I can keep six empty slots when I upgrade to sixty-four and give the DEMs more room to breathe and therefore to keep themselves cooler. The first drive, 512GB, is for the operating system and for all the applications I need. That's it. No footage or libraries of any kind. Second drive, 1TB, is exclusively to store the footage, audio, and any necessary files used on that or those current projects. When I am done with a project, I keep it on that drive for a few months and then I store it on my NAS for archive purposes. The Logitech G410 is perfect for me because it's responsive as any high quality mechanical gamer's keyboard and because I have no need for the numeric pad.
The Logitech G13 allows me to configure all my most used Premiere Pro CC tools right there on the palm of my left hand. Next to my keyboard, the G13 significantly speeds up my editing process. Stay tuned for a demonstration and a free JPEG with my Premiere Pro CC layout. I like the responsiveness in gaming mice, so the Mazione X11 is just ideal for the price and functionality. It also gives you plenty of extra configurable buttons on the palm of your hand. I use the X mouse button control to configure it. For 20 bucks, you can't go wrong. This motherboard lacks Wi Fi built in. However, that is an opportunity to plug a more robust external adapter you can move from behind your desk, and that also includes that nice antennas. The EDUPEPAC1605 wireless dual band USB 3 is the best external adapter for desktop computers on the market today. Among hundreds of other companies, Cable Matters makes a Bluetooth 4.0 USB adapter for Windows 10. They're very small and cheap, and this one works pretty well. I paid 10 bucks for mine. Logitech is a brand I trust, and their C930E records in HD, comes with a microphone built in, and has a 90 degree extended view angle. You gotta be crazy not to protect such an investment. The APC Backup UPS Pro 1500VA UPS Battery Backup and Search Protector BR1500G is a market standard and an extra layer of protection to your expensive beast. I'm also adding links for my USB 3 card reader hub my extra large desk pad and my aluminum mouse pad. Hey, and let me know in the comments what computer you're trying to build and why you're not building it yet. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. And yeah, subscribe to my channel if you want and like this video. Okay, see you guys next time. Bye.